This is Rob Tubbett for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. Delighted, as always, to be joined by Tony Sims in the immediate aftermath of Conor Ben's win over Sebastian Formella here at Wembley Arena. First and foremost, Tony, congratulations on a great win for Conor Ben. Thank you very much, Rob. Cheers. Let's talk about the performance then. Um, career best performance from Conor Ben. What did you make of it? Yeah, of course it was a career uh, best performance. You know, the guy's world ranked. As we know, he's a former IBO world weight champion. And, uh, you know, he's fought at 10 times higher level than Conor Ben's ever fought at. And, um, you know, he was a good amateur. I think he had like 150 amateur fights. So there's loads of experience he's got. And, um, you know, it was a good performance by Conor Ben. I knew that he could put in a good performance like that. And, um, you know, I thought he weren't far off of stopping him. Maybe if it was a 12 rounder, he'd have got on top of him and stopped him in the end. But, um, you know, he's got more gears to come out of him. You know, I felt like he was in second, third gear. There's a lot more gears in him, you know, but it's a great learning fight. You know, it's the first time he's ever done a distance over 10 rounds. And he just proved his class, you know, he never got hit by anything. And he was slipping and sliding and rolling. And you know, as the fight went on, he got more and more confident. Now, when people talk about Conor Ben, the immediate thing they think about is intensity on the front foot, letting big shots go. I was very, very impressed with his jab. How much work's been put into that for this fight? Yeah, loads. I mean, funny enough, Rob, I was saying that on the way to the ring, was like how much we've worked on the jab this year, you know, and uh, he's become inaccurate with a jab. And, you know, he's, he's got a lot of power in the jab when he connects with it. It's like I said to him, it's like getting caught with a right hand, his jab. And... Uh, you know, he's still got a bit to go, a lot to learn, but he's, uh, you know, it's a very good win for him, you know, a good name on his uh, record and, um, you know, he's, he's got an exciting future ahead of him. Now, I mentioned to Connor in there, it's not uncommon for people to be calling him out. He's had it since he turned professional. He's now in a position where he's just beaten somebody in Sebastian Formella, who is in that world bracket. He's going to be called out by every welterweight in the UK. Where next for him? Yeah, like I said before, you know, he's, he's gone above domestic, taking this opponent in here, he's moved above domestic level now. I mean, the only one at domestic level really is Josh Kelly, you know, you can't say he's domestic level, he's, you know, he's, he's above that level. So, you know, you can see them two on a collision course. I want Connor, obviously, because of the COVID, he ain't been active, he needs to be a bit more active. I'd like to see him in a fight in March, uh, defending that belt again. And then another fight maybe in the summer and then this time next year fight you know build it up a big fight with josh kelly obviously josh has got to get through his opponent david Evenson, and uh you know that's an hard fight to get through yourself so he's got to come through that but that's a world level fight and uh you know that's what i'd like to do two more fights and then get the josh kelly fight on now i mentioned to connor in there that he's unrecognizable from that man who fought um cedric Payno at york hall and had a real ding dong and picked himself up the floor as much as we all love that i'm sure you as a trainer weren't massively pleased by that what does it say about the work that not only connor but you have to give yourself a little bit of credit tony that you guys have put in since that performance to produce what we saw tonight yeah you know as i say he was he was he was raw when he first came over here you know and uh he's like you know if you see his first few fights you know he was like swinging away but you know he's put the work in do you know what I mean and we've got a good relationship me and Conor Ben you know and he listens to everything I tell him you know if you watched his defense tonight you know he's a great defense he you know he's got a bit of rolling slipping sliding you know he was comfortable he was just comfortable in there and um, there was never any time that he was in any sort of trouble and uh, you know I just think the last couple of rounds you know he started whacking him in on Formella and you've got to give Formella, you know, he's due, like he, he held up to them shots. I didn't think he would because you can hear the body shots going on him and you knew he was getting hurt by him and the, and, and the right, right hands as well that was connecting with him, you knew they was hurting him, but fair play to him, you know, he's a really tough man. Another box ticked as well, mm. did the distance tonight and against a good opponent. Exactly, yeah, good, good world level opponent. Done the 10 rounds, which he's never done in his life, so he knows he can do that now, comfortable. You know, it's just about being active now, you know, getting out, getting them fights in now and uh, staying active. OK, well, Tony, you are one of the busiest people I speak to in the sport, but I do hope you allow yourself, at least tonight, to be very proud of the performance that Conor Ben put in and the work that you've done over the last couple of years. As always, real pleasure speaking to you. Thanks very much for speaking to Boxing Social and congratulations again. Yeah, thank you very much, and I'm proud of Conor tonight, and I'm really proud of him. Before we go, tell everybody where to follow you on Instagram again. <laughs> they know now, don't they? <laughs> At Tony Sims, they know, mate. <laughs>
<laughs> Tony Sims, always a pleasure. Thanks very much, mate. Cheers, Rob. Thanks, mate.